So welcome to the Village Vision Podcast, where community collaboration and care converge. I'm Dr. Crystal Morrison, and I'm honored to be your host on this incredible journey. As a firm believer in the power of a united village, I'm thrilled to bring you inspiring stories, research, and projects that break down barriers in child and family care. Through heartfelt conversations with experts, advocates, and those with lived experiences, we'll showcase the transformative impact of collective support. So join me on the Village Vision podcast as we explore the remarkable collaborations that lead to better outcomes, foster a sense of community, and inspire action to improve care for ourselves and everyone around us. Emil Kaus. Dr. Kaus is an autism self-advocate, vice chairman of the Board of Autism South Africa, member of the Commonwealth's Disability Forum, and also the newly elected president of the Board of Directors at the International Council for Development and Learning. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Morrison. It's always a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. It's so good to see you again. I know we just met and chatted recently, but it's it's really good to see you again. And I'm so glad that you are able to not only join me on the Village Vision podcast, but you're also going to be contributing to the book that Jeanette and I are releasing called Superheroes on the Spectrum. So thank you in advance for being a part of that as well. It's a great pleasure. Well, my story is is a story of of hope, but especially one where parents or where I encourage parents not to give up hope. Uh, I was diagnosed with autism at the age of three and a half years, mm -hmm. and it, it was actually a specialist educator that noticed that I portrayed ASD tendencies. And eventually, they called my parents in for a meeting and they recommended that I need to go for evaluation assessment. The tendencies that I portrayed were the common autism tendencies. Um, and that was basically my story in a nutshell. And although I am now 30 years old, I still experience challenges when it comes to emotional regulation. And also uh, more generally mental health, mm -hmm. which is now a common thing, which we need to do more awareness. When it comes to change of environment, uh, change of expectations in a particular environment. And uh, yeah, it was, I, one, we need to remember that when you think about the autism spectrum, it's a lifelong diagnosis and therefore. But you were still in school, you were still being stimulated. You had a parent and different people in your life who were still exposing you to things. And one of the things that I think is uh, a, a very poor assumption among the outside world is that non-speaking must mean that that individual is not intelligent and is not understanding. And that couldn't be farther from the truth, right? There are so many people that I know who are on the spectrum who, who might have been non-speaking uh, and but they were hearing and learning and 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 becoming educated, right? But they couldn't necessarily form that into words. And let's let's talk about that a little bit more because you are involved in lots of different uh, aspects um, of bringing awareness and action, not only to South Africa but to to the world. And I want to talk a little bit more about your work with the United Nations, especially around international policy and inclusive employment. Uh, and, you know, when you and I talked, one of the things that, you know, we often see a lot of uh, awareness and acceptance and, and discussion around children with autism. And as you and I well know, it's not as if autism becomes cured and magically goes away, you know, this is something that people continue to to live with. Uh, this is thinking differently, having a different lens on the world. That's what neurodiversity is. So for me, 
my basically my main arguments was that we need to focus more on mental health and creating job opportunities for near diverse individuals because that child becomes an adult and mm -hmm. that adult needs to contribute towards society and it's as simple as that we need uh, stakeholders to get involved in creating awareness mm -hmm. when it comes to neurodiverse individuals in the working force. So, you know, as we wrap up this podcast episode, there's so many important messages that, that you've shared. And as our listeners, what is a key message that you want to leave them with uh, uh, regarding um, the work that you're doing and what they need to know? Well, the key message that I want, basically want to give is that I want public, public entities, society in general to accommodate neurodiverse individuals in a working place or in any sector. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we need to become aware of the different emotional, cognitive, and social challenges that these individuals experience. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of the Village Vision Podcast. I hope you found inspiration and valuable insight from our conversation today. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate, leave a review, and share. But thank you. Thank you for being a part of the Village Vision podcast on Word of Mom Radio. Take care and let's keep shining a light on the power of community, collaboration, and care.